Happy Easter, everybody. We are so excited that you are joining us this special Sunday service. And we have some great things planned for you today. We've got a message from Pastor Austin. We get to hear from somebody in our church today. And we even have a worship song recorded for you guys. And so we are thankful whether you are joining us online at one of our neighborhood gatherings. We want to say welcome to you. I'm Lauren, and this is Allie. And today we're celebrating Easter, and we get to celebrate the fact that Jesus is risen, and that gives us hope for today. And that's what Pastor Austin's message is about, is how we can have hope this week. So I invite you to lean into what God wants to share with you today. But before we do that, let's pray for our time together. Lord God, we just thank you for Easter. We thank you for today that we can celebrate your death and your resurrection. And Lord, I just pray that you would speak to each of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just thank you so much for the gift of Easter and all the blessings that you have given us in our lives. In your name, amen. Today is Easter. It is a day of celebration. It is a day of good news. I'm excited to be celebrating with you today. As we get into our message, a message about hope, for today, I want to ask you a question of where you are at in life. How are you feeling? And no matter how you're feeling today, I want to ask the question of what do you do when you're struggling to find hope? What do you do when you're faced with life around you? What do you do when you have faced a year of COVID and you just feel challenged? What do you do when you desperately want a child and it seems like you can't get pregnant? What do you do when you've been searching for a spouse and that seems like an unattainable goal that is out of your control to be able to make happen, but it's something you desperately want? When each month the bills barely get paid and you barely get by and it feels like it's never going to get better, what do you do in the middle of that? What do you do when you've gone through a year of COVID and it feels and you feel tired what do you do in that situation? And whether this last year has felt like some of the best moments of your life or some of the worst moments of your life, for many of us, it's probably somewhere in between there and we felt a lot of those things. Maybe you feel like one of those memes that's been going around this week about the ship that was stuck in the canal and the, the little boats and cranes trying to make a difference around it. The good news is that the, the little crane, the little boat was able to make a difference in that situation. And today, I want to share how God wants to give you hope. No matter where you are today, He wants to give you true hope, lasting hope, a hope not on the vaccine that's rolling out or COVID going away or anything happening in the future of things getting better or worse or any of that, a hope that will last through it all and a hope that is there, whether things are good or whether things are bad, that you can have hope, you can have life, you can have a perspective that gives you life in the middle of whatever you are facing. God wants to give you hope today, not tomorrow. Well, tomorrow as well, but not only today, but for tomorrow and all that life throws at you, a hope that lasts through life's biggest ups and life's biggest challenges, a hope that lasts whatever life throws at you. That's what we are going to talk about today. The word hope occurs over 150 times in the Bible. It is a book of hope. And the message of Jesus has been called the gospel for a reason. Gospel literally means the good news. And the story of Jesus that we are celebrating on Easter is the good news of what God has done. And it is a message of hope. A few years ago when I was still dating my wife Allie, I was in that stage where I was I wanted to do something that was for my benefit. I was also in this stage where I was trying to make a good impression on her and my wife, who is now my wife, my girlfriend at the time, was a marathon runner. She had run five, six marathons. She could go the distance and it without even breaking its sweat, it seemed like to me. But I, on the other hand, had a hard time running two miles, not just because I was out of shape, but I have really bad asthma and weak lungs. And it was a challenge for me. Matter of fact, the first time I ran with my wife, she was a little afraid because of what my lungs sounded like at the end of that run. But together, we came up with a goal that we were going to do together. We were going to run a half marathon together. That's 13.1 miles that we were going to run together. And I was thankful for that because I don't think I would have made it 
on my own, but we set that goal. We were in the middle of that race. Race day came, and I'm most of the way through that race feeling tired, but also feeling excited that I'm, I'm able to do this. I, I'm going to get there. But right at mile 10, whoever had designed this race had designed it from mile 10 to mile 12. It was uphill. And I didn't actually know that though it was those two miles, but I started going through those miles and it started going uphill. And this is the point in the race where I am the most tired to begin with. And I'm faced with this hill. And as we're faced with the hill, different thoughts start going through my mind. Do I give up? Do I keep going? Do I make it? And what gets me through? What got me through was this hope that it was going to be worth it at the end. That if I gave up, it wasn't going to be worth it. I wasn't going to be happy. That if I made it to the finish line, I was going to be excited that I had made my goal and done what I wanted to do. Maybe my girlfriend um, would be maybe not impressed, but <laughs> at least not disappointed in me. But there was hope that things were going to be good at the finish line. And that's what kept me going up the hill. Even when I couldn't see, it seemed like this hill was never going to end. But eventually, I did not give up. And I had hope that it was going to be worth it. And it was. I made it to the finish line and the end of the race. At Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Not just the resurrection of Jesus, but his death as well. See, without his death on Friday, there would have been no resurrection on Sunday. And if the disciples, the scared disciples that lacked enough faith even to attend the death of Jesus. 11 out of the 12 weren't there for his crucifixion. Instead, they were cowering in fear over Easter weekend, thinking, what do we do now? We gave our lives to this mission, to this man, and it did not turn out how we thought it was going to turn out. They had lost all hope, except it wasn't over. They just didn't know about it yet. And hope this is the thing about hope. It is the most critical when the chips are down and life is at its biggest challenge and we are feeling the pressure of it and that temptation to give up just like I was on, in, on that hill. This is when we need hope. Hope that things are going to be better in the future. Hope that things are going to be worth it and work out. This is when hope is central and it either sustains us or hopelessness leads us to despair and giving up. A person filled with hope does not give up. A person filled with hope doesn't always win. They don't su always succeed, but they don't give up because they have a hope that it's going to get better and things are going to be worth it. Something changed for these men, though, these disciples for them. See, they went from scared and hopeless to unleashed to change the world. Literally, these guys changed the face of the world and it is affecting us today. We're here gathered celebrating on Easter today even because of what they did. They went across Asia and Africa, the Middle East, the Mediterranean. Their words have lasted to today in our New Testament, in the best-selling book of all time, the Bible. They went to their own deaths, most of them with joy on their faces. And we see even Peter who goes from the scared man who denied Jesus to him preaching the word, eventually going to his own death for his faith in what the message of Jesus. And he's so devoted at this point, so filled with hope that his life is meaningful and worth it, that when he goes to face his crucifixion, he, he asks to not be crucified in the same way as Jesus was, but asked to be crucified upside down instead. These men, filled with hope, they went from hopeless to filled with hope to change the world. Something changed to give them hope. Something changed to give them motivation to keep going and to give their lives for this message, this good news of Jesus. And it changed. They had hope that it was going to be worth it. And this same thing can give you hope as well. Our scripture for today comes from Romans 8, and it says, For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope 
The creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. We aren't going to read the whole chapter of Romans today, but it's a great chapter filled with words of hope. I would encourage you to go and look at it, read it this week. It is a great chapter. One of the crazy things about this chapter, though, is it is a huge chapter, a chapter filled with hope. But the crazy thing is there are no instructions in this chapter. There's no commands. There's no imperative that you have to do this or don't do this or this is the way you live. No, hope instead is an effect. My first point today is that hope is a choice. You have to choose hope, and it's not a requirement that you do it, but it's an offer for you. You have to choose it. You have to take it. You have to accept it. And Paul, who wrote these words, is, is telling the church in Rome, you can have hope because of what is coming in the future. You can have hope because of what Jesus has done for you. But it's not a requirement. It's not that you have to live a life filled with hope, but it's an offer for you to take it. He's saying you can have hope just like I have hope. Hope is a belief that in the future things will be good. The definition of hope is that in the future, a belief in the future, that things will be good. <clears throat> in this chapter, we see that hope wasn't a command. It was an offer and a result of their faith. It comes from something. Hope comes from something. It comes from a belief in the future, a belief that things will be better. And hope lets us live well today, regardless of our present circumstances, because of what we believe about the future. Hope lets us live well today, regardless of our present circumstances, because of what we believe about the future. And my first point, that hope is a choice, we aren't forced to choose hope just because the future will be good doesn't mean you have to live and let that give you hope today. You can choose despair. You can choose to sit with the pain and the challenges of your circumstances. When I was running up that hill, I chose hope, but it, I could have done something different. And I could have still made it to the top even without hope. I could have just chosen to endure the pain, put one foot in front of the other, and not give up and trudge my way up the hill and eventually get there. I could have started complaining about the stupid race organizer that put the hill at mile 10. Why would you put an uphill at mile 10? Even if you're not gonna put a downhill towards the end of the race, at least make some flat ground for all those people that are tired at the end. Why did they do that? No, instead I chose hope and I chose to keep my eyes up and my attitude excited for the future and what was going to come as I finished the race. I knew that despite the present challenges and pain, it was going to be worth it. Verse 24 talks about a hope not in what we can see. I didn't need hope when I could see the finish line. Once I could see the finish line, I was going to make it. I was going to get there. I was going to keep Running, matter of fact, I had that extra burst of energy. I can see it. I'm going to get there. Nothing is going to stop me from getting there at that point. No, I needed hope when I couldn't see the finish line. When I'm partway up that hill and it seems like I've been running forever and I don't even see the top of the hill, I need hope that it's going to be worth it if I keep going. Faith is the assurance of things not seen. Faith gives us hope, a hope that doesn't disappoint. But the first thing about hope is that it is not a command, it is a choice. And it's a choice that results from another choice that we can make. It's an effect of choosing to have a faith in the future, a faith that things will be good and that things are working for good right now. You have to start, though, with that choice of faith. If you haven't made that choice, that step of faith to put your trust in God, to choose to follow Him, that's the first step we need to make for us to have hope. We put our faith in God, and that's the foundation of what allows us to have hope. And this is sometimes where many Christians stop. They miss the offer of hope because they miss 
the next step after putting their faith in God and that choice to choose to live by hope. And some of them do choose to hope in a distant future and eternity in heaven. And that is part of what our hope rests in, that, that eternity in heaven is going to be good and worth it. But you can still do that and live a life of pain and misery and despair of this painful, broken world and choose to you know, hope for eventually heaven's going to be good, but this life is just going to be horrible and that's what it is. But God wants to speak more. And my message today is about how God wants you to have hope today. He wants you to have hope tomorrow and not just hope for eternity, but hope today, hope tomorrow, hope in all circumstances. Hope is a choice to put your faith in God. My second point today is that hope is not just for heaven. Hope is for today. Hope is for today. To, that hope will affect your life now. It will affect your life tomorrow, not just once you get to eternity. It says in verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. That glory that is spoken of is the glory of heaven, and it's worth it, and it's good, and it's proper for us to be have a hope that eternity is going to be good, that heaven's going to be worth it, a chance that and we know, and because of our faith, we know that we're going to have a restored relationship with God, that he loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus for us. This is what we celebrate on Easter, the death and resurrection of God's provision to give us a restored relationship to him for all time. And it's going to be good. Heaven is going to be amazing. It's going to be filled with joy. It's going to be a great place to be. But in verse 28, it also says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those that are called according to his purpose. The opposite of hope is hopelessness. Hope looks to a future where things are going to be good, they'll be better. Hopelessness looks at the future and says they will never get better or even they will get worse. And hope for the future is good. Hope for the distant future is good. But today is Easter. We're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus and that resurrection changes things for us. It changes things for you. No matter your circumstances right now, that resurrection changes things. And that hope, that hope in heaven and for one day is a true hope, a good hope, and a hope that would be worth it if it was the only hope we could have. Eternity is a long time and so an eternal hope is a hope that is worth it and well rationally that makes sense. In the moment, it often doesn't seem to be enough, and I'm grateful that God has offered us more than that. I remember when I was in college, and I was facing a lot of pressure from academics and the future and broken relationships and friendships and all sorts of things, and I remember being in this spot where I was crying out to God because it seemed like I was in a hopeless situation, and it seemed like Eternity was going to be good, but was life ever going to get any better? And I was in that spot of depression where it seems like life is never going to get better. And as I cried out to God and poured out my heart to Him and shared with Him, He began to give me a hope and share with me that He had good things in store, not just for heaven, not that I had to endure a horrible life, but that He wanted me to live a good life, a life filled with hope, with freedom, with love, with meaning, in this world and it was those words that gave me hope during that season that helped me get to the next season and find new life. Today I want to share good news with you that God doesn't want to just give you hope for eternity. He wants to give you hope for today as well. Hope for a good life. That life, if it's in a challenging spot right now, life is going to be get better. That God has good things for you. There's another verse that I want to Mention here out of the Old Testament, it says in Jeremiah, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Many people have found comfort in these words. They are spoken to God's people at one of the most hopeless times of their life. They have been defeated by their enemies, families are separated, many lost people they loved. They were forced to move from their homes and their land to the land of their enemies and be relocated. 
and it seems like nothing is working out for them. It's never going to get better. And it was in that moment that God said to his people, take hope. I have good things for you. God has good things for you today as well. And those words that were spoken to his people, the Israelites, so long ago, ring true today for us as well. That God has good things for us in, in the future and he wants to give us hope. And this is what God says for those that follow him, that this will be the fruit out of your life. This is what he has in store for you when you trust and follow him. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are things I want. These are things that give me hope that I can have a life characterized by this, by goodness, by kindness, by faithfulness. I can have a life. Maybe peace is one of those things that stands out to me, that I can have a life filled with peace. These are what comes from those that follow God. He wants to offer you not just hope for eternity, but hope for today as well and hope for tomorrow that it's going to be good. So we move to my third and last point for today. Um, I want to look at verse 18 that says, The sufferings of this present time aren't worth comparing to the future. I think those are words that it's important to acknowledge. And my third point is that life won't always be easy, but it will end good. God doesn't promise that you're never going to face challenges. He doesn't say that life after you follow him is going to be amazing and good and it's going to be beautiful and you are never going to face challenges and hardship and pain anymore. He says that heaven will be that way, but the rest of our life here is not promised to be that way. And I'm comforted by... Paul, whose words to the Philippians, it says, You always in every prayer of mine, for you are making my prayer with joy. Paul was praying joyfully for them. And you can see throughout this letter to the Philippians, the joy that Paul has. And he talks about the joy that he has. And the important thing to recognize about this joy is that Paul's situation. Paul writing these words is in prison for his faith. He's going to what he knows is eventually going to be his death because of his faith in Jesus and him sharing the gospel, the good news of what Jesus did because of this. And in this situation, despite it, he has hope, he has joy, and this is the same thing that God wants to offer you. But it's important to note and acknowledge that life isn't always going to be easy because so that when that comes, you don't lose hope. You can have hope despite it that today might be hard, tomorrow might even be hard, but God has good things in store for you. And he holds that there are sufferings for the believer in this present age, those that follow God. There is suffering that is the direct result of our sin. There's suffering that we endure for Jesus' sake, suffering that arises because of our faith in a world that often rejects Jesus. But beyond that, there's even sometimes, unfortunately, suffering simply because we live in this imperfect world. And Paul is realistic, not saying that the Christian will be free from troubles in this present life. It is important, therefore, to learn how to bear them and bear them with hope. The good news, though, is that if you put your hope in God, He can cause you to overflow with hope because of His power. If you are hurting today, if you are afraid, put your hope in God and let him overflow your life with joy and hope. Let's say you lose your job. Continue to hope in God that he will be your provider. Let's say that if you find out someone you love is sick, continue to put your hope in God that he is a healer and he cares for them. If you find yourself worried about tomorrow, put your hope in God and let the Holy Spirit be your comforter. If you lose someone, as much as that hurts, put your hope in God and grieve like those, not like those that have no hope, but put your hope in God and the promise of the resurrection of heaven. If you're hurting today, put your hope in God. Those who hope in anything else have a limited hope, but scripture says this, may the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Life will not always be easy and pain-free, but God wants good things for you. and He wants for you to make it through them, through those seasons with hope. It says in verse 26 of Romans 8, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. 
And it's true. God has sent His Spirit to help us. God is with us. Next week, we are going to start a new series as a church called God Speaks. This is a topic that I'm passionate about. It's a topic that I know I talk to many people and they want to hear God. They want to know, is He real? Is He out there? Is He still alive and working and active in this world? Or is He some distant God that you know, is just there and set the world in motion and isn't present. And the good news is that he is present and that his presence, his voice helps us in our weakness. So I want to invite you back next week for that as we dig into how we can hear, how you can hear from God and his spirit. But today, as we wrap up, today is Easter Sunday. Today is a a day that is filled with hope for the church. Friday was the death of Jesus and it was sad And it was Jesus taking on our sin and all the brokenness of the world. But Sunday, Sunday was a day of joy. Easter is celebrating the resurrection of Jesus and the hope that it gives us for today, strength for today, joy for today, the ability to move forward in life with hope. This is what we have on offer. Hope not just in eternity, but hope for tomorrow and today that Life is good and God is good. And Jesus is our sign of that. Jesus is the proof of that. He is the down payment for us, the signed agreement. It's like a document between two parties that God signed and sealed with the death of resurrection and and sealed it with the resurrection of Jesus. And he slid it across the table to you. And he doesn't force it on you. He says, do you want to sign this? Do you want to be a part of this? Do you want to put trust in Jesus? God won't force it. He offers you the way out. You have to choose and take it. If you want that kind of hope, a hope for tomorrow and a hope for eternity, a hope that comes with the freedom from your past, this is what God offers. This is what we started to co a church for, a church for freedom and hope. This is what we believe in. This is why we started the church to be a and able to share that freedom and that hope with everyone. If you believe in Jesus, you just have to look to him and accept that freedom, accept that hope, and live and choose that choice to live a life of hope. It's available to you today. If you haven't put your trust in him, he's offering that to you right now. He's saying, I want to give you hope in this life. I want to give you a life of meaning. I want to give you freedom from your struggles, freedom from your past, and let you live a life. God is saying, I want to have a restored relationship with you for all of eternity, and I've provided a way with my son, Jesus, who came. He lived a perfect life for you. He died a death that he didn't deserve for you. And then he rose again three days later. You put your faith and trust in Him, you can have a restored relationship with God. And will you accept that gift? Will you choose to live for Him, choose to live for Jesus and not yourself? Giving up your way of doing things that you might have thought was freedom but was really slavery to sin, would you give that up for a lordship, a following of Jesus' way of doing things that seemed can sometimes seem like slavery but is really freedom. Do you accept that? Right now, God is saying these words to some of you. On this day, on Easter, we remember not just the death of Jesus on the cross, but the resurrection and all that he did for us. Sunday is the day of resurrection. It was the check clearing, the payment being processed, and the bank saying it went through. Jesus' death was meaningful. It mattered. And his resurrection is the proof of that. It's approved. We celebrate that today because it grants us freedom in our lives. We celebrate it because it gives us hope today. We could have had the best week of our lives or we could have had the worst week of our lives. But no matter where you are at, God wants to give you hope today. You might be facing a broken marriage or friendship, death, illness, challenges with kids, family, you might feel alone, you might feel weak, you might feel scared, you might feel sad. But God is offering a way forward no matter what you're feeling, no matter what you're facing. He is saying, I want to give you freedom and I want to give you hope. You just have to choose to accept it today. If you want to accept that, if you want to choose to believe in Jesus and follow him, I want to invite everybody to pray with me right now. 
whether you and feel like God is inviting you to make that decision for the very first time today, or you want to recommit to following him, I want to invite everybody to pray right now and you have this opportunity to give your trust, your hope to him. So would you pray with me right now? God, I want to choose to hope in you. Choose to hope that you have good things for my future and good things for my eternity. God, I admit that I am not perfect, that I have messed up in my life. I believe that you came, Jesus, and I believe that you died and rose again to new life. And I choose to live my life for you going forward. God, I want to pray for everybody right now that they would be filled with your hope, that your spirit would touch everybody listening to this message that's a part of our service and our gathering today, that they would be able to be filled with your hope today, a hope that knows no bounds. In your name, Jesus, amen. If you prayed with us today, I want to invite you and ask you to do something with that. Faith is not meant to be lived alone. We want to partner with you in your journey, wherever you are at. So go ahead right now in the middle of service. It's okay. It's, the, it's service, but take out your phone. Go to tacoachurch.org slash connect. Click on the Tacoa card. Fill that out. Let us know the decision you are making in your faith today. We want to pray for you. We want to just reach out. I will personally reach out and just, just offer my prayer, my support, my encouragement of you. If you made a decision today, we want to celebrate that with you. As we are doing that, as you are doing that, we have a couple more things in store for you for our service today. Before we finish, it's been an amazing day. I'm excited that we have one more song for us to worship together. It's been amazing to get to worship today. Excited it's a small taste of what's going to come in the future for our church as we continue growing and building our team. But before we get to one more worship song, and when we, when you hear that song, I invite you, wherever you're listening from, to go ahead and sing along if you're comfortable, or even just listen and stop and pray and connect with God, reflect and take comfort and hope in what He's done. But before we get to that song... I'm excited that you are going to get to hear from Selena, who is one of our team members here at Tekoa. And you're going to get to hear her story of how God has given her hope despite some of the challenges she has faced. She has been able to look to God and have hope in her situation. So why don't you hear and listen to her story? Hi, I'm Selena Oseguera. I live here in San Jose, California, and I've lived here for going on four years now. I went to a Christian school, private Christian school from uh, preschool up until sixth grade and then public school from then on. So it was always a part of my life pretty much. Um, and then pretty much kind of started to solidify and really become my faith around the like, end of high school, college. For me, my faith really came to be during those years in part because I was starting to go through a lot of um, emotional changes, uh, actual psychiatric situations I was going through. I was um, in the process of understanding and being diagnosed with GAD, which is an acronym for General Anxiety Disorder. I didn't know how to handle it, and I did not know how faith at all would play into it. Um, luckily, I got some help through um, my medical provider. So uh, I think, what really kind of grew my faith in that area was understanding this is like everything else in your life. It's giving it to God and having faith with it. That doesn't mean you don't do the work to get better and to learn about yourself. But at the end of the day, like if you don't incorporate God into this, like every other part of your life, it's going to be much harder than it needs to be. And I mean, we're taught in the Bible that God cares for us and wants us to cast literally our anxieties upon him and our fears upon him because he cares for us and he cares for our well-being and that hit so hard in a good way for me when I was diagnosed because I was like this is not this was never told to me like this was not something I was told that I could do so because I've gone through that I've learned so much about God so much about myself so much about faith and so much about um just people and how to love people despite it all um, because when you're so mean and angry with yourself because with anxiety you, you basically are just constantly critical of yourself and 
of what you're doing when you're that way with yourself and you understand that God loves you despite that, you learn, shoot, I don't want to talk to myself that way because God doesn't view me that way. And I don't want to view others that way ever because I know what that feels like. And I realized that when we say give that to God, it's not just like, okay, we give it to him and that's it. Like there's the rest of the verse, like cast your cares on the Lord for you, cast your anxieties on the Lord for he cares for you and talks about um, when you do that, he gives you a peace and a joy and a hope. It's not just, you just kind of put it in the trash can and nothing happens as you give it to this sovereign deity who not only wants you to vent like a therapist, but actually gives you um, like this otherworldly peace and comfort. When I moved um, out of my college town, as soon as I finished and moved out here to the Bay, everyone was so candid about their mental health and what they were going through and they were also Christian. I'd never experienced that of people who are, hey, I'm not emotionally okay, but I also have faith things will get better, but just not right now. I never experienced that, and especially now that I've um, come to Tekoa, I think I've met, I've met so many people who are just so raw with their lives and so vulnerable with what they're going through. Like, I, I don't think I've ever been in an interaction where I didn't feel comfortable telling someone I wasn't doing okay or that I needed some prayer. I want to be part of the change in the church and like I want others to come along with me as a like global and community church of not being afraid to not just talk about mental health but talk about mental illness. Talk about like um, the hard stuff and be empathetic when people are going through these things. Like. As Christians, we're not immune to these mental health disorders and these mental illnesses. I want to encourage everyone else to like learn to be okay with talking about these things um, because when you don't, it becomes a source of shame and that's the last thing that God wants us to have because when you have shame, it isolates you from people. Spiritually, I feel like God wants me to be like, yep, we can get through this together. Um, I, like, it, it kind of strengthens my faith and strengthens my relationship because it shows me I can have hope through the darkest of times. It's not just conditional. It definitely has taught me that joy and hope in God is not based on circumstance ever. Search the world, and it couldn't fill me. Moves and difference, and treasure the face I never know. And you came along and put me back together. And every design is now satisfied. Better than you, oh, there's nothing better than you.
turn morning to dancing. You get beautiful ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn morning to dancing. You get beautiful ashes. You turn shame. What a powerful service we've had today, getting to hear Austin's message on hope, getting to hear Selena's story and share worship song together. And um, for me, it was really impactful just to continue to think through how I can have hope in this season. And I work in education, and so this past year has been uh, very different than it normally would be with distance learning and figuring out um, resources for students who need extra support and how to best support teachers and families and lots of transition. And now with schools reopening, um, it seems like, okay, maybe things are going to be back to normal. But at the same time, it seems like we're so far from even getting back to where we were. Um, and that can be discouraging at times. Yet today's message helped me really think about how I can still have hope that God is doing something specifically in this season. And he wants me to lean into what he has for me and really uh, think through how God is going to use this to help develop my faith, to help encourage those around me, uh, and really just help me to uh, live out my faith. And so um, I encourage you to really think through what are ways that you have hope in this season. And, you know, don't just move on from this message, but really sit in what God wants to do in your heart today. And we want to hear from you. How is God bringing you hope in this season? Or maybe you already have hope in this season and you're realizing that. We want to hear that from you today. And so I invite you to go to our Connect page, tacoachurch.org slash connect. And through that Connect page, you can fill out the Tacoa card. And on that card, you can let us know how God's giving you hope. Or like Pastor Austin talked about, if you made a first time decision today with your faith, or maybe you have a prayer request, we want to hear from you. We want to do life with you. And so we want to celebrate what God's doing. We want to be praying for you and all the things. So make sure to fill out your Tokoa card today. And on our Connect page, this is also where you can worship God through your giving. And this is something that we do each week at Tacoa because we want to be intentional in giving back to God. If you're a guest with us today, uh, we don't want you to feel any obligation to give. But if you feel led to give or you to call Tacoa Church home, this is your time to give back to God. And so, like I said, you can go to our Connect page and give there. Because of your generosity, we've been able to impact our community in big ways this Easter. One of our values as a church is to live love local we really want to impact our community and make a difference in our city and so we were able to pass out almost 20,000 eggs enough for about 2,000 kids to get to do an Easter egg hunt this Easter and uh, we did that because we wanted to really spread joy and fun in our community, but also because we wanted to be able to share Jesus with so many of our neighbors and friends. And thank you for your generosity in helping us to do that. We were also able to partner with Foster the Bay and some of the different foster families that they work with throughout Santa Clara County, as well as different homeless organizations who work with kids who are uh, struggling with homelessness. And so uh, because of your impact, we were able to bless our community in this way. 
And next week, we are going to be starting a new series called God Speaks. And I know sometimes it's a little bit mystical to think about God speaking to us, but every single day we have an opportunity to have a conversation with Him. And I know for me personally, sometimes I don't necessarily feel like God speaking, but I feel Him in the nudges and I feel Him in the quiet and the whispers. And I know this last season has been really crazy, and sometimes I feel like God hasn't been speaking very loud, but He's always been there sharing some hope with me and just guiding me along. And so I want to encourage you guys to come back next week because we're going to be kicking off that series called God Speaks, where we get to learn more about how to hear from God and how he speaks to us. But before we go today, I want to do something special. It's not something we normally do here at Tacoa Church, but I'm going to be sending you guys out with what we call a benediction. And this is just a prayer of scripture over your life. And so as we go today on this special Easter Sunday, I would like to share these scriptures with you. And it's going to be in Romans 8, starting 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all, how will he not also with graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Is it God who justifies? Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is the interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or swords? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Have a great week, everybody. Hi, I'm Daniel. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you're watching live online, I'd like to invite you to join our discussion group that starts right now. You should find a link in the description box. It will be either above or below the, the screen you're watching right now. Uh, so join us in a few minutes. We'll have some time to chat about the message, get to know each other a little bit. Uh, see you soon.